We've just joined us. Our guest on this episode of Question Time is the Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Sirika. And we're looking at the crisis rocking the aviation sector in Nigeria and the federal government's intervention to reposition Nigeria's aviation sector according to world-class standards. Now, let's come to policy issues now. What's the Aviation Ministry's position on double taxation? Well, but you have to be very specific. What are the double taxation? What and what uh, equals to double taxation? Um, I'm sure that any tax that is chargeable by any aviation agency, you know, would be charges that are allowed by the laws. If you're able to pinpoint one charge that is not covered by our act or by the law, I will revoke it now instanter during this interview. Isn't this a burden on the airline operators? No, no for, for sure taxation of any kind, of any kind, for somebody who wants to profit, it's a burden. It's something that you wish that they, you would go free. But if there's any tax, what I'm saying that it's undue, that's being unduly charged in the airlines, they should write me, they should come forward, we'll look at it and strike it out so long as it's not covered by our laws and it's not allowed. And if they feel that it's a uh, so huge a burden also, even if it is covered by law, and they think it's impeding on the progress of their business. They should come, we would dialogue with them, partner with them, think along, and make sense out of it. If truly it's hampering business and growth, you know, it's our responsibility to review our laws. These laws are not sacrosanct. It's not Bible or Quran. It's something that we can look at and amend uh, in such a way that uh, will make doing business very, very easy in this country. Now, let me still take you back on the issue of um, mismanagement of funds because you raised something very essential. Uh, you talked about the, this administration's determination to audit most of the airline operators. So what are you doing to stop this unpleasant cycle? No, no, I mean, every business, uh, it's unique to itself. Um, I'm sure the way ARIC is being run will be very different from the way Aero will be run. It will be different from where Asman or Omni Blue will be run. These, these, these uh, 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 mechanisms by which you run your business, the different different business models that you think is applicable to you is not applicable to the other. Somebody may decide, for example, to go uh, a low-cost uh, carrier. You know, you fly dry for one hour. He thinks that you are not even entitled to water, for example, you know, in his model of business. Some may indulge in giving you uh, some fanciful things and so on and so forth. So I think th there are different, different uh, models. But... The important thing is to make sure that these airlines are solvent, that they will continue to, to honor their obligations, that they will continue to provide service with ease, and that they do not go bankrupt and put passengers' uh, um, um, travel into jeopardy. You know, I think it's what is key. Uh, the mechanisms by which to ensure that these airlines will sustain themselves once they are given and granted the license to do so. Uh, for example, NCA is telling you that before you enter into scheduled flight, you must have three aeroplanes. And for you to continue to remain in service, you must have a minimum of two. This is to guard against a situation whereby you'll jump into uh, the industry with one airplane or two airplanes, one has a problem, and the whole scheduling becomes a mess. So um, there are quite a number of things uh, uh, that they're putting in place. That's why I think it's important. Like I said, it's an ongo ongoing thing. It's a normal thing for them to, for NCA to carry out economic regulation, to carry out uh, um, um, forensic uh, audit and search uh, to determine if this airline is healthy or not. It's a normal thing. But uh, in our time, we are improving upon that to ensure that businesses are sustained, retained, and promoted. Um, because, like I said, we are social democ democratic in nature as APC in government, um, we're very concerned about the number of jobs uh, that we're able to put out there in the market. So we're not in the business of closing down shops. Whatever government can do, would certainly do to promote businesses. And the airline business is inclusive. Do you think the federal government's intervention is strong enough to prevent this airline from laying off their staff? staff? No, yes, of course, if we, if we, notice, if we notice that the, an airline is doing something that is wrong, and it's a drain pipe, and uh, they are wasting money, we should be able to uh, pinpoint to them. And we are at the liberty also to, if we think that it's dangerous, it's going to distort the sector, we are at the liberty to withdraw their license for that reason. I mean, we should, we should help them as much as possible to stay on course. 
And if they're not able to do so, they have exhibited incapacity to be able to transact uh, aviation business uh, within the standard and recommended practices of ICAO and within our own laws and within our own vision. And I think uh, that airline in the first place is not worthy of being an airline, therefore we can withdraw the license. You are licensed to operate meaning that everything about you is healthy, is good, you are not going to bounce off customers and passengers, they are not going to buy tickets and you say you are not flying, and that is the whole reason why we would first do the studies on you before we grant you license to, to, to partake in the business. So if in the course of executing the business we find out that you are doing something that is inimical, that will make uh, the business go bad, you know, and of course we will stop it. Would you consider the idea of a sinking funds for airline operators? Well, all of this thing that is um, um, private sector led, as the industry is fully deregulated. Uh, before now, I had always fought of some kinds of funding for the aviation industry. I remember back in time, um, in 1999 or 98, 99, I was arguing that if government in its wisdom was, will find it reasonable to establish ship acquisition and shipbuilding funds, under the then NMA, Maritime Authority, and then also to establish FUMTA, Federal Urban Mass Transit Authority, under the road transportation subsector. Why not aviation? Aviation needs some kind of funding. And that was at that time. Um, now, I think it's to try to create the atmosphere through private sector where funds can be available uh, at a very good, comfortable, rates that would be able to transact aviation business. Um, government do not have that kind of money now uh, to throw in uh, and give airlines or any business of, of, of for that matter for them to continue to do their business. But it will create the enabling environment to allow access to such funds through private sector led and driven, you know, um, for people to access this kind of funds to do. So I am for it. Uh, sinking funds and with all its uh, own variants and, and intricacies are for the experts to sit down and, and, and decide. Uh, at the level of the ministry, we are watching, and then uh, we would, uh, for sure, intervene uh, at the appropriate time um, on which kind of model best uh, to suit. Uh, but within our plan, within what we've been thinking, is that so long as you are able to access equipment, to lease them at comfortable rates, to be able to service them, to get spares, do training, would have solved a lot of your problems. And that's why in our vision we're thinking of all these leasing uh, company to be established and, and MRO and so on and so forth, i.e. maintenance repairs and overhaul centers and so on. These are all designed to cushion the overall uh, cost of doing business innovation. Because if I can maintain my airplane in Abuja or in Kasina or Azere or somewhere, you know, rather than taking it to Europe, I've saved the cost of ferrying the aircraft, I've saved the cost of uh, 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 taxes that I'm going to pay out there. I've saved the cost of uh, people that are going to fly the airplane and come back and inspection and so on and so forth. So all of these things are geared towards reducing the cost of the business and then of course uh, creating an atmosphere that is conducive for aviation business. Now you, you, you mentioned the idea of Aviation Development Bank. How far have you gone with this proposed idea? Well, Aviation Development Bank, um, uh, like I said, is a, an idea conceived uh, when we were writing the manifesto of APC uh, with Chief Ogbe as chairman and myself as secretary, um, not only for aviation but for all sectors with the economy. The intent and the idea is that we should be able to pull private sector together to avail these funds um, uh, for people to access and do business. It's still uh, something that we hope to achieve. It's still something that is a um, uh, work in progress. We're still consulting with people who uh, I'm sure I've spoken to the chairman of Infrastructure Bank, uh, Le Monsieur Duco, and so many other people, and trying to see how they can come together and create some kind of uh, funding that aviation can leverage on. You know, it, uh, it's still work in progress, and it's not since it's not government that will create and fund it. It's private sector. We're only um, discussing with them and then allowing them uh, to come together and create such kind of funds. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time, what is the federal government doing to address high cost of aviation fuel? Find out from the Minister of State for Aviation, Hadi Surika, when we return. <laughs>